Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Explorer Games video. Today we're taking a look at Mono Black Devotion, a deck I was already tinkering with before Phyrexia released, as they recently added Nykthos in the format, a land giving these monocolor decks a nice mana boost in the mid to late game. Another payoff for increasing our devotion to black is a Grey Merchant of Asphodel, affectionately known as Gary, a 5 mana, 2 4 when it enters the battlefield, each opponent loses X life and we gain X, where X is our devotion to black. So Gary adds 2 devotion himself, and we've got plenty of of other permanents increasing that number. So Gary can often stabilize us by gaining a ton of life and can also be a win condition by draining the opponent to death. And then Phyrexia added a few more cards to strengthen the archetype, including Phyrexian Arena, which is now legal in the format, a 3-man enchantment, saying at the beginning of our upkeep we draw a card and we lose one life, so it can be a nice source of card advantage, and especially in a more controlling build where we have a lot of cheap spot removal, we can play a longer game where Phyrexian Arena gets to shine, and where we have the time to actually leverage the extra mana from Nykthos, and eventually Grey Merchant can make up for the lost life from Phyrexian Arena. And then at 4 mana, 2 copies of Phyrexian Obliterator, which is now also back in standard, making it legal in Explore. A 4 mana 5-5 five five Trampler, saying whenever a source deals damage to the Obliterator, that source's controller sacrifices that many permanents, so it can be incredibly punishing against some of the aggressive creature decks that wouldn't be able to attack into it. And then more importantly, also adds 4 Black Devotion, which will make our Grey Merchant incredibly deadly, adding even more mana with Nykthos. And then taking a look at the rest of our deck, at 1 mana we've got a full set of Fatal Push. We're not great at enabling Revolt, so it's mostly here to deal with 1 and 2 mana creatures. You may be noticing the lack of Thoughtseize in this deck, which is deliberate. I'm not playing it since it's not the best combo with Phyrexian Arena. If we're already losing a ton of life, Thoughtseize doesn't increase our devotion for Grey Merchant, so I prefer playing cards that can answer things that the opponent's already invested mana into to add to the board. That way we have fewer dead draws with Phyrexian Arena, and we can instead take over the late game that way. And then a two copies of Warlock class, a one man enchantment, and on level one it says at the beginning of your end step if a creature died this turn, each opponent loses one life. Not incredibly relevant, but can certainly add up. Then for one and a black we get it to level two, at which point we take a look at the top three cards of our library, put one into our hand, the rest into our graveyard, so it gives us some useful card selection, can make it more likely that we find a Nykthos, or find more cheap interaction or sweeper effects against creature strategies. And finally, at level 3, for 6 and a black, at the beginning of our end step, each opponent loses life equal to the life they lost this turn, so we can double up on our damage output, which can be especially relevant if we play a Grey Merchant to potentially one-hit KO the opponent, and with the extra mana from Nykthos, using Warlock class as a mana sink can certainly come up. Then at 2 mana we've got the full play set of Go for the Throat to complement Fatal Push as a cheap spot removal spell, destroying target non-artifact creature. Not too many artifacts in the format, so I prefer this over the other 2 mana instant speed options. And then a 2 copies of Timurat, which also grows its toughness with our devotion to black, so it will be a great blocker, and also gives us some additional graveyard hate. For 1 and a black, we can exile up to 2 target cards from graveyards, and we also gain 1 life for each creature exiled this way, so it shines against the more aggressive burn strategies, but the graveyard hate also very useful against decks like Greasefang. Then the Fan Lurker is a 1-1 that makes the opponent exile a card from their hand when it enters the battlefield, so even better than discarding. And then for 2 and a black we can give it plus 1 plus 1 until end of turn, which is also a useful ability once we start generating a ton of mana with Nykthos. So Fan Lurker just gives us an early creature, don't really mind if it gets removed, gives us a chum blocker where necessary, can apply pressure against control, and also increases our devotion by 2, so it does a lot of useful things for the deck. Not as much of a fan of Gifted Aetherborn in this list, even though it has a lot of useful abilities and the life gain can offset set for Exen Arena. In a lot of matchups, if the opponent can simply ignore the Aetherborn since it doesn't really affect their game plan, whereas the Fen Lurker still at least gets a card out of their hand, and then if we end up wiping the board we don't feel bad losing Fen Lurker, unlike the Aetherborn which is more of an investment. Then we also have two copies of the Meat Hook Massacre, a great sweeper against a lot of the Go White creature decks like a Mono White Aggro or Black Green Elves, can gain us some life back as well, and even against Control we can still run it out for X equals zero, just to increase our Blank Devotion, and to punish a Opposing removal spells, which will now drain the opponent for one. And then at the 3 mana, besides Frex and Arena, we also have two copies of Murderous Rider, which we can use to take out opposing Planeswalkers, which can be sort of tough to deal with otherwise, since Go for the Throat and Fatal Push don't answer them, and we don't have a ton of creatures to apply pressure with. And then it's also a 2-3 lifelink afterwards, so it can also be useful against some more aggressive creature decks, increasing our devotion by 2. 
And then at 4 mana, besides Phyrexian Obliterator we've got two copies of Shieldred, another excellent way to offset the life loss from Phyrexian Arena, as we get to gain 2 life and punish the opponent for drawing cards as well on a 4-5 with Death Touch. And then I'm also playing two main deck copies of Leyline of the Void, which can be a lot of fun if it starts out in your opening hand, as you get to put it straight onto the battlefield as a nice way to increase our devotion for Nykthos and a Grey Merchant. And then if a card would be put into an opponent's graveyard from anywhere, exile it instead, so at its best against the graveyard combo decks of the format like Grease Fang, Parhelion, but in a lot of other matchups the ability comes in handy, thinking of Mono Green Devotion, where Cavalier of Thorns and the Old Growth Troll can still provide value when they die, but if we exile them instead then we don't have that issue. And then two copies of Extinction Event, speaking of the Mono Green Devotion deck, this is at its best against Green Devotion, as we get to choose Odd or Even, and then exile each creature with mana value of the chosen quality, and being able to exile Cavalier of Thorns and Troll means we don't have anything to worry about once they die, and naming Odd is also very effective, as most of the creatures in the Green Devotion deck have an Odd mana value, and then we can still potentially keep our Shield Root and Obliterator around. And then at 5 mana Grey Merchant, a 1 of copy of Bolas' Citadel, which is a ton of fun to ramp into using Nykthos, and then once in play it can provide a ton of card advantage by letting us play spells off the top of our deck by paying a life instead of their mana value, so it can also be very effective alongside Grey Merchant, can maybe play a free Obliterator and then generate a ton of mana with Nykthos to go off afterwards, so just a very powerful card in this deck, but drawing multiples can be kind of awkward, so just a 1 of here. And then a mana base, besides four copies of Nykthos, has four copies of Castle Lothwain as well, as another great card draw engine, especially once we can make a lot of mana with Nykthos and we're empty-handed, so it kind of mimics Phyrexian Arena if we're empty-handed. And then a 16 basic swamps to make sure Castle comes into play untapped. No creature lands, don't really need those since we don't often have time to activate them anyways. And then Abandoned Mire as a way to potentially get back a creature from our graveyard. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems acceptable. Warlock class, level up. Head or land drops for Obliterator into Grey Merchant. Nykthos can sometimes be awkward with Obliterator if we don't have enough black mana or devotion to start out. But we might end up hard casting a Murderous Rider just to give us more devotion. Okay, opponent's green white life gain. So a matchup where I would love to find an Extinction event, specifically. For now, just take a land. Obliterator, while great, doesn't block flying creatures, which is what our opponent's going to be presenting soon. And a bishop, so yeah, next turn. They could already start making extra angel tokens if they have for Splendid Angel. Their opponent attacks. I think killing Bishop is okay here, even though we could kill the Angels themselves. Bishop is such an annoying enabler, and at an even mana cost it wouldn't get exiled by my Extinction Event on Odd, since most Angels are 3 mana. Opponent had a Jada instead. Okay, Shield Root's not bad. Can keep our life total a bit higher than Obliterator, and reducing the opponent's life can also potentially mean that they don't get to pump their team with the Valkyrie. Although, with Nykthos in hand, Obliterator does have a bit more upside. They both get exiled by Skyclave Apparition, so that's not really a factor. Fine, I'll go with Obliterator. And then hope to make extra mana with Nykthos next turn. Opponent with a main phase company, and ouch, they found Apparition to exile Obliterator. So that's a pretty big setback. Okay, opponent's still at 21, so at least Speaker's not close to active. And then now, do we Phyrexian Arena or do we Shieldred? I think we should Shieldred. Present a blocker. And gain some more life back before maybe deploying double Phyrexian Arena. Opponent's got their own Nykthos to make some more mana. No real mana sink. So just the Flyers attacking. Good to see. And a Jani. Okay, that can start making tokens, at least they can't use a zero ability. Another Grey Merchant. So at 11, yeah, I think we're probably okay to play a Phyrexian Arena. Not the most mana efficient play, admittedly, since we can't really play two of them. But it will set us up for next turn.
And there's a resplendent angel. Okay. So now we definitely need our extinction event or some other removal. Fall to six. And our opponent gets to make a 7-7 seven, seven token end of turn. Simarets. Hmm. Don't know if Grey Merchants is enough to survive here. But we can play Timurat first, or Fraxen Arena first. Probably need the blocker. Activate Nykthos. And then I guess we can play Arena, followed by Grey Merchants. Possible Murderous Rider was even better. So, we're back to 20. Hopefully that's enough. I guess they can activate Resplendent Angel as well here. Which would gain them a ton more life. So yeah, maybe the game is going to drag out for a few more turns, in which case I prefer the extra card draw from Arena. Don't think they'll be attacking on the ground. So we barely survive, and I guess we die to our own Frex and Arena, if it weren't for Timurat gaining some life here. Although, are there any creatures in the graveyard? One bishop. Okay, so... Arena goes on the stack. Activate Timurat. Exile bishop. Gaining one life. Losing one life to Arena, but then gaining two with Shieldred. Before taking another damage off Arena. So we should still be alive. Barely. About as close as it gets. And there's double Grey Merchants. Okay. Take our actual draw step, find Obliterator. Another Nykthos would have been nice. So if I activate Nykthos... Um, can't play anything beforehand. We have 11 mana, so double Grey Merchants should do it. Okay. Grey Merchant activates a Warlock class would also be enough. But this will deal a tiny bit more damage. And then... I guess I could have even played a Murder Strider first, so a slight sequencing mistake. But I should still have plenty of devotion here to kill our opponent. Wow. What a game, at one life. With double Phyrex and Arena trigger on the stack, but we still got there. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Don't have the most exciting hand, but it is functional. Got a few ways to catch back up if our opponent has an explosive start. Opponent's mono green so far. Seems like a devotion strategy. Okay, so Extinction Event, one of our better tools in this matchup. Gonna hang on to Meat Hook Massacre for later. Although playing it on turn 2 can potentially increase our devotion. Kiora we can take out with Murderous Rider. But not before the opponent maybe plays a troll. Yep. So they'll draw a card with Kiora right away. They're still missing Nykthos. So we've got that going for us. Take out Kiora, and then Extinction Event on Odd is often what we want against the Green Devotion deck. Could see a Cavalier here. It's gonna be Elvish Mystic. Attack for four. And that's it. Well, now I can play Shieldreds, which will do a good job of stabilizing us. And that still leaves Extinction Event on Odd as a possibility. Okay, Storm the Festival makes sense. Finds Troll and the land. Alright, time for Extinction Event, I think. Exile everything, attack for four. And then we have a backup extinction event for maybe a flashback storm later. Wouldn't surprise me if they have another one in hand. Okay, it's gonna be a Nissa instead. So Fenlurker can maybe get the last card in hand if they don't cast it here. Take three. And a Karn, never mind. So Fenlurker 
Could now try and take whatever Karn searches up. And yeah, with Nissa in play now, they can easily flash back Storm next turn, so we're still in a lot of trouble. Just gotta try and get them low enough so Grey Merchant can close out the game. The forests are even in terms of mana value. And yeah, that portal to Phyrexia is not gonna happen. So Fatal Push can take care of the forests. And then we probably take out Karn, since we won't be able to take out Nissa. And then Fen Lurker grabs portal. Okay, Devotion up to 4 will be 6 when we play Grey Merchant, so I'm considering playing a Meat Hook for 0, just to increase our Devotion. And then between the 2 damage from Shieldred here down to 10, next turn 8, and then another 2 from Shieldred. So if they don't gain any life here, we might have the opponent next turn. Ooh, Nykthos and Kiora, so they can make a ton of mana. Question is, do they have a mana sink in hand? Otherwise, it doesn't matter. Another Karn would be really bad. Another Storm the Festival, perhaps. Opponent activates Nykthos. Devotion is not incredibly high. And our opponent just makes a wolf token. Okay. That's fine. Do we get to untap and win the game here? Looks like it. Play Grey Merchants. And drain for eight. Two more from Shieldred. So no need to attack. But it might have a Boseju in hand actually to blow up Meat Hook. Decrease our devotion. So that's maybe what they're considering here. Okay, in that case, they get to live for another turn. That's too bad. So, now I can attack, however, so they'll be forced to chum block. And then Fen Lurker can uh, also attack face, I guess, since they're forced to block Shieldred. Okay, they get one top deck here. At one life. Cavalier of Thorns could maybe still mill Storm the Festival. So let's hope that doesn't happen. Okay, that's fine. Opponent draws off Kiora. And then Shieldred will finish them off here. So I guess uh, that was gonna kill them no matter what. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, and see, yeah, I'm inclined to keep this. Hopefully a Leyline is useful in the matchup, and then we draw Nykthos to give us a mana boost. Opponent with a turn on Mutavolt, so it might be an aggressive tribal deck. Alright, it is white. Activate Mutavolt attack, so not afraid of a fatal push. I guess we can play a Timurat for the time being. Alright, Brutal Cathar, so it does seem like mono white humans with a strange opener. Can play Fen Lurker in case we want an extinction event, get back Timurat, so I don't want to play another one. And then extinction event on Odd could come in handy. Aspirants even. And the Lieutenants even as well. Okay, so now I'm potentially inclined to Extinction Event first. Could also just play Obliterator, and then if they play another Brutal Cathar, we can Extinction Event on Odd to get our two creatures back. Shieldroot can start gaining life back, although it doesn't block Cathar as profitably. Sure, let's play Obliterator.
Just need to make sure our life total is high enough so we don't die to brave the elements. His opponent did have a second Cathar. And officer, their last creature. So we're going to take a significant hit. Unless Thunlurker wants to chump, which I think is reasonable. Take six, and then Extinction Vent on Odd. Should leave us in a decent spot. Can do one on Even as well. But start by getting back our creatures. So Brave the Elements does not give Mutavolt protection from black. So it's not necessarily lethal, but they could put us to one. It's going to be hopefully initiate for now. Now, sadly, we exiled their creatures, so Timuret doesn't have much to snack on besides a Funlurker. So I think step one is play Shieldred. Hope they don't top deck Brave, and then we can start getting a life back to get out of range. Ponon does have Hopeful Initiate to potentially blow up enchantments. Timuret is an enchantment. But if they remove counters, we're less likely to die to Brave the Elements, so that's fine by me. Another officer, so we might want Extinction Event on Odd, so they cannot blow up our Fraxian Arena with Initiates. Officer goes digging, finding Adelin. Okay. So maybe I should wait for another turn on Extinction Event. Opponent's likely going to play Adlin instead of blowing up Arena with the Initiate here. And then once again hope to dodge Brave Elements. That seems reasonable. Could also Warlock Class activate, maybe find a Fatal Push to kill Lieutenants so we don't die. Which is maybe the safer move. And if I fail to find Fatal Push I can still maybe find a land to play Timorets. Alright, found a Nykthos instead. Do we need a lot of extra mana here? I guess leveling up Warlock class isn't bad. Second Obliterator would be pretty decent too, although it's going to take a while before we can cast it, since I'm going to have to Extinction Event first. So in the meantime, I think Nykthos is going to be more useful. Although it won't let me play Timuret right now. So it's not without risk. Another Brule Cathar. Doesn't outright kill me here at least. Opponent goes for Adlin, and Bodyguard does not help against Extinction Event. Okay, so Event on Odd is looking good. Opponent can't really attack into Obliterator. And we get to take our draw step now with a ton of extra Devotion. So play Arena first, tapping our Swamps. Increasing our Devotion slightly before activating Nykthos. And then we can Extinction Event on Odd. A level up Warlock class, which doubles our damage outputs. And then now what if I attack with both? Then they could chump Shieldred with Aspirant, take 5, which would be 10 damage. And then... We wouldn't necessarily be dead on the way back if they activate Mutavolt and Lieutenants. It's only 10 damage. Although they could top deck a few cards like another Lieutenant to present lethal. If I stay back, I don't die to Brave the Elements. So I don't think there's any one card that really kills me. So it is tempting to just attack all out with this leveled up Warlock class. Although it's not without risk. And with Arena drawing us extra cards, we would probably easily win the late game. But I guess we can just win right now with Warlock class. So that works too. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. And we do need some untapped lands here for this hand to work out. Can I keep a Swamp will do it? Yeah, I think it's good enough. Extinction Events is a good catch-up mechanism. And it only really takes... One Swamp here. Our opponent on black and green elves, so... Take out the Lunar Elves and then maybe save Extinction Event on even instead of odd. 
which can also hit the uh, elf tokens. So for now, play Phyrexian Arena. I'm okay letting them keep the Visionary. And then we've got some useful tools in hand. Meat Hook Massacre, probably our best card overall, but Extinction Event, a close second. It's gonna be a Realm Walker. So that can play Elves off the top. So now we're maybe back to Extinction Event on Odd, or we could always just use Murderous Rider. Fatal Push deals with a Visionary. So I could just kill both creatures with Spot Removal here. It does feel like a little bit of a waste, but it's probably fine to just keep the board clear when we have a Phyrexian Arena drawing us extra cards. Dealt with the opponent's two card draw engines. There's a Circle of Dreams and a Sentinel, so Event on Odd deals with both, although we could play Shieldred first, even an Obliterator. Against Elves, Obliterator's not at its best, since they will build up a huge board before they attack, at which point the ability is not super useful. So I prefer Shieldred gaining me life with Phyrexian Arena. Have to be mindful of the Elf deck now also playing Tyvar to immediately activate their Elves, maybe get something back from the graveyard. And it's another dimension to the deck that it didn't have before. So Event on Odd will leave them with an Elite and a Warrior token. And then we can play a Timurat first, Meat Hook Massacre I guess now, probably even better. So, quite a bit of devotion going around, but we can Massacre for two. I guess their last card could be a Collected Company, in which case I might want to Massacre for three, although they would just float to mana and play it afterwards anyway. So sure, do it for two. And then Timurat can also activate here, gaining some more life. And then Exile Visionary and... Another 2-drop that they might get back with Tyvar. And our opponent explodes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Hand seems fine. Double Fatal Push will buy us some time. Warlock class can hopefully find like a Phyrexian Arena in the meantime. Opponent on red aggro, so happy to have the early spot removal. So yeah, I think I prefer killing Swiss Spear over... Leveling up Warlock class. Can maybe wait to kill it if our opponent tries to target it with a pump spell. We can punish them. There was a chance they were on the red-white heroic deck as well. But nope, Swiss Spear attacks. We'll push it. And see what's next. Nothing. Don't mind seeing that. Level up a Warlock class. Finding... Probably a Grey Merchant. Land is tempting, since we do need to get up to 5. But I'm less likely to find more Grey Merchants than I am lands. Leyline will just increase our Devotion next turn. And then against a Burn deck, Grey Merchant seems excellent, so... Don't hate my spots. Squee, on the other hand, is a problem, since we don't have Revolt enabled, so that's gonna attack us twice. So in the meantime, I should probably just kill a token, which is not exciting, but... Saves us a bit of life over time. Alright, there's the arena. Probably worth playing, since it makes it more likely that I hit my land drop for Grey Merchant, which is a card that really stabilizes me. Even though Leyline's not useless against Squee, since it would potentially exile it. So we're bound to take a pretty big hit. But uh, yeah, hopefully double Grey Merchant back-to-back -back is enough to stabilize. Light up the stage for one mana, finds Kumano and Lightning Strike. So we're at a virtual 7 life here. 6 with Phyrexian Arena. So desperately need a land. And Nykthos is the best type of land. So that's going to gain us 5 life. And present a blocker for Squee. And then now Nykthos can potentially help us double spell. 
could even activate Nykthos, play another one, and keep going. If Squee attacks, do we block it, or do we block a token? Since I wouldn't mind the extra devotion from Grey Merchants, and it's better to play Leyline before blocking Squee. But we'll see here if our opponent even attacks. Okay, they are attacking. And, uh, yeah, I think I just block a token. Could take four, although then we're dead to two Lightning Strikes and our own arena. If I block a token, I'm less likely to be dead to burn spells, and I'm more likely to keep Grey Merchant for the extra devotion for both Nykthos and Second Gary. Game is fine, although it does come into play with an extra counter thanks to Kumano. The extra counter does make a pretty big difference. Okay. So, what's our play? Can activate Nykthos for starters. And then play Shieldred. Activate another Nykthos, and then play Grey Merchants. That seems decent. Don't quite have the mana to play a Leyline first. But let's go back up to 15, and then... Pass a turn, and our opponent explodes. Yeah, they're gonna go to 3 from Shieldred. Can level up my Warlock class next turn. And that does it, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and what an awkward hand with Triple Castle all coming into play tapped. That being said, I think I still keep. We can always draw a Swamp along the way to help out. And uh, some removal to make sure we don't fall behind. Put on black, green, elves it looks like. And there's our Swamp. So... The elf deck has a lot of 1-drops and 3-drops, couple 2s as well with the lords. So it's tough to say whether we should um, let them overextend into an extinction event, or just kill the elf now. I think we just kill the elf now, slow them down. And then we'll wait and see on the extinction events. Might play a 4-drop creature first, and then event on odd afterwards. Okay, never mind, looks like a graveyard deck instead. And a pretty interesting variety. Double Stitcher Supplier, Milling, Scrapwork, Mutt, and Morit of the Frost. So must be part of some combo. Play line and pass. So Extinction Event on Odd would exile both suppliers. Diabolic Intent, alright. I guess we'll find out what the plan is here. Tyvar might be part of it. Get back a 2-drop. There's a lot of 2-drops here, as you can see. Well, Leyline of the Void seems good in a matchup where the opponent's using their graveyard. So let's try and shut that down first. And yeah, opponent concedes to Leyline of the Void. There you go, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and seems fine. Warlock class can find an extra land, a bit of early removal, and then some useful tools going late. Turn 1 Forests, Sentinel, so Elf Tribal presumably. So we could wait to set up a Meat Hook Massacre here, and just hit our land drop with Warlock class hopefully. So we'll just keep making sure we play our lands out. Mutavolts. So, might be mono green elves instead of black green if they make room for Mutavolt. Another Meat Hook Massacre. So, at least I can play a Timorets as an early blocker. And then. Don't think I'm fatal pushing the Sentinel here. But we can wait and see. Massacre will increase our devotion for Timorets before it gets minus X minus X, so likely to survive. Okay, another Timorat's not what we wanted to see necessarily. 
So do I feel the need to kill Warmaster now? I think I keep Fatal Push to maybe kill a Lord. That could pump their Elves, so the minus two, minus two for Massacre is still enough. And for now, let them make more tokens. But hopefully find a fourth land soon. Another Warmaster, so they're going real wide here. Although, of course, Massacre would also kill the Lord, pumping the Elves. But Fatal Push could still save me a lot of damage here from the incoming attack. So we'll let them attack if they want to. Opponent just hangs back. Right, so I'll kill probably the Clan Caller. Or I could pass. Since I'm going to Massacre if I hit a land. If I hit a non-land, I guess like a Phyrexian Arena I might want to play. And then this will save me a lot of damage. Okay, Nykthos works. So play Massacre for two. And that's gonna send them back to the Stone Ages. As well as gain us a ton of life. Sometimes if you have a Massacre, you don't gain any life if you also have a Leyline of the Void in play. So that's sometimes a scary interaction. But uh, still happy to have both in the deck. Realm Walker is not a bad way to refuel here. So... Going for an Extinction Event on Odd is reasonable. Although we could add a Shield Root to the board first, and then a second Massacre could also clean up. And this applies a bit more pressure in the meantime. We're building up our Devotion, and the opponent concedes. Since with enough Devotion we can level up our Warlock class, eventually drop our uh, Grey Merchant to maybe one hit KO the opponent onto the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Hand is lacking a Nykthos and maybe some cheaper removal. Eventually we'll need a third land to uh, cast our arena. But we do have an Extinction Event to catch back up as well as Meat Hook Massacre. So against Aggro we've got some handy tools. And turn one Kumano. That land is good. Don't think I'm playing a Massacre for zero. Next turn I might play Murderous Rider just as a 2-3 lifelink. Or we can go for Frex Arena. Take a bunch of damage and then Obliterator is not a bad way to stabilize. Kind of like uh, Rider here. They might Lightning Strike it. If not, it can maybe hold off the etching. Okay, it's going to be Annex, so it's more of a Devotion red deck. Okay, well, Phyrexian Obliterator lines up quite nicely against the potential Ember Cleave. And then Extinction Event on Odd would clear the opponent's side of the table, as well as Murderous Rider. Can just play another Obliterator. I'll see Nykthos. I'll just have to activate now. Play Obliterator, and then I can still play Phyrexian Arena. Not in a hurry to wipe the board. Maybe go for it next turn. Another Annex just to make a bunch of tokens. Which does help against Phyrexian Obliterator, but... Meat Hook Massacre will take care of those. So... Yeah, can Massacre for a bunch here, still activate Castle to draw, maybe after playing Fenlurker. So, I'll have to activate this now if I don't want my Fenlurker to get Massacred. Do it for three. Gain some life back. And then we'll play Fun Lurker, activate Castle. And then certainly one Obliterator can attack, but we might keep them both back on defense. Ooh, Green Merchant, so we can play next turn for 14. So if I hit their opponent down to 15, we should be able to finish the job. And at 23, even if they play Torbran here, it's not a disaster. Another Annex. Uh, 
Okay, so activate Nykthos, and then Grey Merchant should be for 16, which wins the game on the spot, but we could still attack for 10 afterwards. Okay, so we got to see our Mono Black Devotion deck in action, and yeah, the other deck seems pretty well positioned in the current Explorer meta game. It can be a bit vulnerable to combo-oriented decks and heavily controlling blue-white decks, for instance, where cards like Obliterator are not at their best, and the opponent can potentially keep our board in check with sweepers and cards like Farewell to exile some of our enchantments, which we rely on to win the late game. But we have some good tools against aggressive creature decks with all the spot removal, couple well-timed sweepers, Extinction Event has been very important as well, especially against Mono Green Devotion, so I'm pretty happy with where the deck is currently positioned. There are still a few flex slots in the deck, like the Leyline of the Void, you could potentially replace with something else if you don't like it, but having it in your opener, especially against a Grease Fan combo deck, can be incredibly important. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay, want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day! I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.